Hi, Jean Lurson here. So this week I wanted to um, do something, do a fall scene, but I didn't want to do the regular fall scene using the colors that I normally use. I wanted to be a little outrageous and use some colors that um, may not, you may not see in in the lands in the fall landscape, but it will represent it. Now I'm doing an, a 10 by 10 square uh, painting on hot press paper and I'm just um, squirting with my uh, bottle that creates droplets on the paper. And then uh, I'm adding in some Indian yellow and th this is the color that um, I'm adding that uh, you wouldn't normally find, I guess, in the landscape. It's quinacridone magenta. And I um, have some uh, Daniel Smith cadmium orange, which uh, I like using the cadmium orange because it doesn't have the cadmium in it. It's, n it's not, it's not toxic. So um, just, you know, adding s these three colors randomly on the paper into the water that's been sprayed on and um, I actually didn't spray enough water on so I'm going to fix that by just adding more and spritzing the painting so far so it'll run a little. Um, I want this to be very loose and uh, with my wash brush I'm just uh, taking some of the color from the leaves and adding it to the rest of the paper because I, I was going to use blue for a sky but then I decided no I want a glowing fall scene and if I uh, put blue in it will create a totally different look so um, I wanted this sort of golden look and um, it may not work but I'm going to give it a try. So now that I've actually used some of that uh, color I'm going to um, just add back in uh, sp sp some splashes of magenta, yellow and orange. Um, I'm going to be doing this throughout the painting to um, give the impression of leaves. Now I'm starting to, uh, I've got a, a um, watercolor pencil in brown and I'm doing an outline of the trunk and I was going to see if I could actually use the watercolor pencil instead of paint and create some interesting textures with the trunk. But then I decided, no, I don't think this is going to work. So I'm adding in some acrylic ink in um, burnt umber, the De La Rani acrylic ink. And that has actually spread too far, so I'm going to have to start wiping that. And I'm using the pencil again. I, I am going to continue to use the pencil together with the ink. And um, carry on creating the trunk and some uh, thin branches into these leaves. And I can, while the ink is still wet, I can fix the the way it, it has dispersed, I can fix that um, once I've got this uh, part of the trunk sorted in, in the thick, in the uh, width that I wanted. So, um, y when you're working wet in wet, things like this happen and you know, it's not true that you can't fix watercolors while everything's still wet. That's why I like working wet in wet because I can fix things. I can take my paper towel and uh, dab back some of the what I would consider mistakes that I'm making as I go along. Um, when you're working wet in wet, you you it's not going to be perfect all the way. You are going to have to do some fixes. So don't be put off. Um, when you do make a mistake, just figure out how you can fix it. There's a lot of ways you can fix it. 
and we'll, you'll see that as, as I'm going along here, now I'm sort of adding more branches. I want to get all the branches in and um, then I'm going to work on the um, ground area. But um, while the leaves are still wet, I want to get the branches in because uh, the, the watercolor pencil creates fuzzy lines, which rather than rather than sharp pencil lines. So that's why I'm doing this. Now I'm going to add some of the same colors to the ground area for now. And um, when I've uh, added the colors, I'm going to also add in some acrylic ink and create some textures. And um, I've used a lot of the magenta. I've used the majority magenta with a bit of yellow and, and orange. I, li I like this magenta color, and I know it's not a full color. Now I'm going to add in some uh, of the acrylic ink in burnt umber, and then to that, um, and I'm adding it into the tree trunk also because I'm going to try and get some more texture in the tree trunk. I'm using the granulation medium now to disperse the acrylic ink and create some textures in the ground area, uh, which is very important. Um, it doesn't always go the way you want it. Um, I'm going to fix it. At the moment it just looks like three lines uh, of texture and uh, I'm going to add in a bit more color because I've lost some of the color, some yellow. Now I'm going to add some more with my, my uh, hog's hair brush. I'm going to add a little more of the burnt umber acrylic ink because I didn't like the patterns that, um, that it made previously. And spritz, when I spritz it, it's going to um, disperse and create some little bushes and branches and I'm um, going to do that on both sides of the tree and then I'm going to take my um, pencil and just draw in some uh, branches in the bushes and um, on both sides of uh, the tree. Just create some more interest and some more texture to the whole thing. spritz that a little bit and let the ink disperse and uh, I have to continue uh, dabbing the tree trunk because uh, it was too wet and I don't want it to flare out again Now I'm adding some granulation medium to the tree trunk because I want to get more texture into that. Um, of course, you'll see, I always say don't put your subject slap in the middle of the painting. And I started out putting the leaves to the left. I didn't have my little muse on my shoulder telling me not to put the tree trunk in the middle of the painting, which I then went and did. Well. I'm not going to start again, I'm just going to continue. This time I'm just going to say that I'm breaking the rules. Because I can. <laughs> so I'm adding some more splashes into the uh, leaf area because I feel that there isn't enough yet. Um, I don't think you can overdo this. Now I'm just lifting back some light areas on to the right of the painting. And uh, with my rigger brush, I'm going to add in some tree roots to ground the tree and to create more textures in the ground area. Um, it's, it is important to, to ground your tree. 
and I'm using the uh, rigger brush and the watercolor pencil but it really doesn't make much difference um, you can use either you'll get the same result really I just like experimenting as I'm going along I'm going to add in a few uh, redo the little uh, twig branches which um, disappeared because the paper was so wet and that'll create some more interest. Now that it's dry I've decided that it's a little too bright and the magenta didn't quite work and I, and I need, I feel I need to turn it down. So I mixed some uh, dark brown with French ultramarine and burnt sienna and I'm going to splash some of that in with my hog's hair brush and also create some larger uh, dark leaves just to tone down the painting a little and get it more um, to my liking I guess. I actually prefer painting uh, more muted uh, watercolors but every now and again I like to break out and do something colorful because I don't often do it and um, this is four colors are perfect for this kind of experiment and so I'm taking my uh, cling wrap and um, dipping that in the uh, dark colors and also in some burnt sienna I'm adding some burnt sienna as well to get more of a, a, a fall look, I guess you could say, to the painting. And I think that's what's going to fix this painting from being a little too over colorful to looking more like uh, a true fall color. Um, it's interesting. <laughs> I wanted to start off doing something a little much more abstract, but ended up doing um, this instead and um, it's okay, um, it's great to experiment and uh, it's now more, a little bit more to my liking and then after I took off the tape I realized that I hadn't added any fallen leaves into the ground area so I'm just adding those finishing touches and again you cannot overdo it here. You can add as many as you like. I mean, you know, you, you know when if anybody who's experienced fall leaves, um, when they've fallen from the tree, you, there's a thick carpet of leaves. Um, so you really can't overdo this. That's why you can have such a lot of fun. I hope you enjoyed this demonstration. And if you did, please give me a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, and I'll see you next time. And don't forget that the materials are always listed below the video, just click on show more.